much everyone here. So hello and welcome to this program of the University of Arkansas Small Business Technology and Development Center. And today we're doing the tech part. We are so pleased to be able to bring you these educational programs to help support small businesses. Please be advised that we will be recording this conversation for ASB TDC education purposes. You will be able to access those recordings at our website and all of our past workshops and webinars, and we will post that link in the chat. I will introduce Jason and Ellen momentarily. But first, I'd like to introduce us and tell you a little bit about the ASB TDC. I'm Amy Robinson, a specialty consultant with the Small Business Center, and I'm here today with my colleague and co-host, Chris Case. Say hello. If you don't know about the Small Business Development Center, it is a one-stop shop for startups and existing small businesses. We are associated with the University of Arkansas and affiliated with the SBA and statewide ASB TDC as well as a national network of more than a thousand small business centers across the country. Locally, we offer complimentary one-on-one, -on -one, I did say complimentary, one-on-one -on -one consulting services and programs like this. We love to cover relevant topics for business owners. And if you're not already a client, we encourage you to visit us at sbtdc.uark.edu. Chris will post that in the chat as well. And all you have to do is click Get Consultant and you'll be able to find us. After this presentation, again, you'll be able to find other programs at our website. So we hope that you will visit. We also have a fantastic toolbox for you to use um, that has all kinds of goodies for you um, to help support your business. Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you to um, say hello to everybody and, um, and get us going. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing too. Okay, great. So at lunchtime today, you guys, we are bringing you planning technology for your business with Integra Tech. We love this format, as you all already know, because it gives you all an opportunity to talk with experts, ask the questions that you have, and work through whatever challenges you and your small business may be having. This is an interactive workshop, so we encourage you to ask questions as we go along. Please keep yourself on mute until you have a question or comment, and then feel free to unmute or you can also use the raise hand feature or post in chat. We will be monitoring that closely. Alan will actually be answering questions today in the chat. So um, please just open up and ask any questions that you possibly can think of and we will get those answered. Amy. I'm gonna have you keep going, Chris, because my yard guy is buzzing in the background. Go for it. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, great. So while we're getting to know Integra Tech, we also want to get to know you. So if you will, please post in the chat and let us know what industry that you're from and maybe what business technology questions that you know that you already have today. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and pass it over to you, Jason Robinson and Alan Moon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Robinson. I am half of the uh, founding uh, mm -hmm. founders of, of Integra Tech. Uh, we're a local uh, IT service provider in Northwest Arkansas. We were born from the church. Uh, Alan and I come out of corporate America. Uh, a lot of what we used to work on kind of looks similar to what is behind me here. This is uh, looks like a data center raised floor. Uh, and we came from Tyson specifically. Um, so this is kind of looks like home to me back on the on the raised floor. But uh, we, we launched the business in 2017 to serve small businesses in Northwest Arkansas. Um, we serve our churches in a volunteer capacity. We're a Christian-based organization, and we really stress the partner aspect of what we do. Uh, we want to feel like an extension of uh, our customers' organizations and be very integrated uh, into their processes. Uh, even, you know, we're on the roster of one of our clients as an employee, basically. Uh, the name Integratech came from Integrity and Technology. Uh, we really uh, hold that very near and dear. Integrity is everything in this business because uh, trust, uh, you know, there's a lot of people trust a lot of things to us whenever they trust their technology. It's their data. It's there's privacy things. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, so with that, Alan, do you have anything else to say about us or? No, I'm just uh, I'm glad everybody showed up and uh, I'm glad the weather's getting nice out there and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you in the chat while Jason's talking to you. Yeah, and we do want this to be interactive. Uh, it helps to get more value out if I can speak specifically to, uh, you know, problems or challenges you guys may be facing. Uh, collectively, we've got 30 years of IT experience at the Fortune 100 level um, and the spectrum, you know, really, like I say, it's from a 501c3 volunteer role at a small, you know, five, uh, you know, personnel church staff kind of place up to, you know, supporting, you know, tens of thousands of users globally. 
the, the team I left when I ejected from Tyson was, we were responsible for all of Tyson's data globally. We had 13 ter or 13 petabytes of capacity around about a hundred locations globally. And we did that with about six folks. Uh, so we've got a, a breadth and depth of project knowledge and other things we can speak directly to a lot of what I call war stories through our uh, history, which, uh, you know, at the time are never fun, but when you come out the other side, you always learn from those things, which are good. Uh, so, you know, what we seek to do, you know, some examples of some things we've, we've helped solve some problems locally with since we launched the business. Um, we've had clients reach out to us that have been victims of ransomware, you know, where we've come in and seen that their network security was not up to par, so to speak. They had holes in their firewall and, you know, they had been breached and, and uh, they had in, had gone through, they had contacted us after they had, uh, you know, restored from backup. They didn't pay ransom, uh, but they ended up having some data loss and they needed to shore up some of that infrastructure. Uh, you know, we've got uh, customers that, you know, they had a, maybe a warehouse that, that went down and it was down for several days uh, and they had an internal IT staff um, and that staff was looking at it for, you know, three, four days, could not get that facility back up and running. They called us, we deployed to the site, walked on site, and it was very similar to the infrastructure that I built for my church, actually. So I put a finger on the problem within 30 minutes and was able to bring services back online and monitor for two to three hours while production began running again and everything was was cool after that. Um, you know, the, the, the breadth of technology that impacts your business, you really have to think about like what would happen if you know, maybe all of it goes away or just even some parts of it were to go away for a day. Like what would that impact be for, for you, for your process, for your employees, for being able to serve your customers and those kind of things is uh, businesses today are very, very dependent on technology. So, you know, the, the purpose of today's workshop is really to educate folks to be thinking of, you know, things that maybe they don't normally think of day to day, because, you know, a lot of people look at tech like a light switch, you flip it on, it works. And, you know, they're, don't have to know what's in the breaker box or the wires or the other things that's there. And that's good. That's what we do. We come in and help maintain and manage all that. But, uh, you know, making decisions and things, vendor selection, you know, we'll get into some facility pieces, devices, uh, services, some other things as we talk through today. And like I say, if you have any specific questions about stuff or we happen to mention something that maybe sparks a question, feel free to raise a hand or, or uh, you know, chat. And like I say, Alan can answer. And if we need to pause and kind of discuss, that's Totally cool. We're here for you guys today. So with that, um, I like to start presentations with a quote, and this is one from Picasso. Uh, it's basically talking about, you know, goals and how you, how you really set out to do it. And it really takes action. That's the part of it. You can, you can have a dream, um, you know, or you can have a goal and a goal is what you're really going to have traction to achieve. And as a business owner, you know, we launched, like I say, in 2017, I was, corporate guy for a long time. So stepping out into this world, we actually came through the ASB TDC program. Uh, and Lori down there helped us a lot with the plan, how to get started. We were the epitome of a technician. Like we, we know what we do very, very well. The businessing part of what we do is really where, you know, uh, as a computer person, we, there was things that were kind of foreign to us. So, you know, we, we've learned a lot in the time we've been here. We continue to learn. It's a humbling walk each and every day, but we're so blessed to, to be in this area. I've lived here my whole life, like I say, and it's, a, it's really an honor to serve the, the, the community and the capacity that we get to, you know, even our volunteer roles are day to day in our businesses to help other businesses grow because uh, Northwest Arkansas is just such a great area. So. Uh, so a lot of people, uh, when they, you know, set out with this, whether you're starting a new business, whether you're growing, whether you're transitioning, whatever those things may be, um, technology can really be a scary thing for a lot of folks because there's, there's a lot to it. Um, so back in my corporate days, people used to say, you know, how do you, you know, you never boil the ocean or how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time and all those things. But really, the, it's just to make, make sure that you just focus on one thing at a time or, you know, don't get overwhelmed. So, you know, a systematic approach is, is a really good way of making a list of things. And we've got some stuff we're going to help with that today, stuff that you can step into and address. Maybe some of this, you know, pertains to your business and your needs. Maybe some of it doesn't. We're trying to do a broad stroke here uh, and we're happy to deep dive offline or maybe at the end of this presentation on some of those things as well, if we've got some time there too. Um, but, you know, it really comes down to what your business needs are for your business. Your business is your business. It's not the guy next door. So uh, the good thing about technology is there is a ton of solutions out there to suit those needs, but you got to make sure you pick the right ones. Um, you know, in a budget, everybody's got one. So making sure that we can operate within that uh, and then setting priorities, you know, correctly. 
and uh, you know, Alan and I, pretty resourceful. Uh, you know, we've been, like I say, the, the spectrum that we cover in our in our experience and, and the pedigree that we have is we've had, you know, million dollar budgets in hand to do those things. And I also at a church have, you know, scrapped together stuff off eBay to make stuff happen, you know, with almost no budget. So, you know, we've, we cover a pretty broad stroke there as well. So resourcefulness is something that, you know, we, we've gotten pretty handy at over the years. So this slide is kind of a, you know, table of contents, if you will, for, for kind of what we're going to speak through. Uh, you know, this, these are some topics to cover, things to think about, um, whether, like I say, you're launching, transitioning, uh, you know, we, we regularly run into clients that uh, a lot of times technology is a set it and forget it and they drive it till the wheels fall off and those kind of things. Maintenance is so important uh, to your technology uh, to make sure that because uh, you're so reliant on it. So uh, you're planning for failures or life cycling things ahead of time before they really hit the ditch. Th those are all things that really uh, help with the continuity of your business and, and help processes flow. Uh, you know, it's less interruption for things. All that stuff is very important. So I love we'll that you, uh, you said that, uh, Jason. We've got a couple of uh, comments coming in. Please keep them coming. Um, and, uh, and Alan's already checking out your website. Uh, we've got a couple of businesses here, and it really is about planning for the future and, um, and kind of knowing, uh, seeing things down the line and what some of these newer businesses need to do earlier on or if they're um, already existing. Um, and we have some people that are helping other businesses. Hey, Wendy. Um, and, uh, and kind of knowing what it is that they can uh, talk to them about and, and when to plan some of these things. And so that's great. You're hitting on, on everybody's uh, hot button today. So that's fantastic. That's good. Yeah, I mean, you know, all, all pieces of technology is what, you know, works together. I think, you know, for me, a lot of times when I'm talking to businesses, I say, you know, really, it's a three legged stool, it's people process and technology, that's how we that's how we stand stable with things. Uh, you know, if all I'm doing is presenting, you know, widgets and gadgets uh, of different technology at best on one leg of that stool. So, you know, we have a lot of project management background and, and like I say, budgetary responsibilities and other things. And we really want to inject ourselves into the people equation too, and get to know the staff, get to understand our businesses and, and understand their needs because, you know, it's an 80, 20 rule, you know, you got two eyes, two ears and one mouth. So we, when we sit with our customers to engage and consult, we listen to what their needs are so we can bring the best value for those uh, you know, for the technologies that we present, you know, of the things that are on this board. And some of it is just steering a person in the right direction, not necessarily anything that we have to offer. It's just, hey, you need to look this way. This is what you can do. Or squeezing more out of what they got. A lot of people don't totally fully utilize what they're paying for a lot of times with technology. Um, but, you know, telecom, you know, it's going to be your internet, you know, uh, phone system, different type of things. Uh, Teams is huge these days too, you know, as a collaboration platform. Uh, you know, Zoom, everybody's doing that stuff with COVID. Um, you know, branding, a business operating system, which some people may or may not be familiar uh, with. We called that in, in enterprise ERP, uh, enterprise resource planning, uh, which was SAP in that space. And there's some small business players that we can kind of talk through. Contract management, a lot of people overlook the importance of, of really managing their contracts. Um, I was actually between the uh, kind of the walkthrough we did with this. It was just this week we did. I went and walked through a, a church that was up in Bentonville and said, you know, what are you paying for internet? What do you got for a package? You know, and the finance secretary was like, ah, yeah, we pay about this. I don't know what it is. And we went and looked and it, they have not revisited their telecom contract with Cox. And, you know, Cox isn't going to call you and say, hey, your three years is up on your contract. We can reduce your bill for the same speed or we can add more speed for the same money or renegotiate because technology, the good thing about it is it's, it's faster and cheaper all the time, pretty much. That's how it operates. Uh, so, you know, all it is is a phone call to, to either get better services for the same money flat or, you know, save some dollars if you're okay with the services you're getting. Uh, so those kind of things are things we help coach our, our clients through as well. Security cannot be overstated. I mean, we could do an entire workshop on just security. Um, it's something where a lot of small businesses think, hey, I'm not a target because I'm so small and they're never going to know I'm here. Well, uh, that's not really the case. Uh, you know, a lot of times small businesses are targeted specifically because they don't have an IT internal guy taking care of things. And the uh, bad guys really know what the, what the limits are for prosecution. Uh, as well, because uh, we did a workshop uh, last year with the F or two years ago with the FBI 
uh, CyberSec guy locally, and he went through and, you know, if they don't exploit you for more than $30,000, you can't even file a case. And, you know, technology is very efficient, efficient and effective, uh, good or bad. So somebody can sit out there and try to exploit thousands of small businesses to the tune of a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars a piece. And they will, they will get more out of that than going and chasing, you know, uh, a big whale, so to speak, as far as doing an exploit on a corporate environment. So, you know, small businesses are very much targeted and it's something that we try to educate our customers with and, and start with a really good network, really good security. And then some of our small businesses, you know, deal in areas where there's regulatory compliance. We have a customer with the DOD, they're a contractor, you know, for the defense system. So we manage the compliance for them. We've got customers that manage HIPAA stuff. We help them with those things, navigating those compliances. Um, you know, coming from a publicly traded company, we, we had definitely had some compliance to manage. So uh, we're familiar with it. And then your devices, you know, the, everything you have from your mobile uh, to your laptop workstation, uh, you know, whether it's cloud-based, those kind of things, all that stuff's important and it all plays a piece uh, in the puzzle. Uh, I joked with uh, the ladies earlier this week, I crushed my cell phone in a car door uh, rental uh, last week. And it's kind of funny how much you rely on those things because it's multi-factor. So, you know, it took me a little bit to figure out to get my recovery keys and things around to, you know, get my, get my access back to my accounts uh, on some of the things that I had. So, uh, but I was fortunate to get it repaired and, and get it back. So now we're good. Uh, data is everything. So for businesses, you a lot of times are protecting client data. Uh, you have, you know, maybe it is, you know, uh, intellectual property that you have for your business that, you know, special sauce that you have nobody else does. We kind of literally had special sauce, you know, from our old world for recipes and mixes that we managed, you know, the data protection of, um, you know, so those are, those are key things and primary data protection. And then disaster recovery was a real big piece of what I did uh, in my corporate world. We would, uh, we contracted with uh, IBM in Colorado and I would fly twice a year to their bunker for five days and recover the company as if it had been blown off the map. So planning ahead is, is really very important to understand where your dependencies are, where your critical points are for your business, identifying those things, documenting those things, building a process around what if scenarios uh, so that, you know, uh, when Murphy shows up, you guys are ready kind of a deal. So in, in the telecom space, uh, we, you know, what we like to coach folks on, everybody is reliant on internet. Like if you ask a business, Hey, what would happen if the internet went down? It's pretty catastrophic for a lot of businesses. However, a lot of businesses, you know, they, they'll go out and purchase, uh, like a standard Cox cable modem or an AT&T link or something that's available, even, even choosing where your business is, if you haven't chosen that yet, that's important because sometimes, you know, we've got businesses that are rural and they don't really have any options. So that that's important. Um, so, you know, look at what's available, you know, look at your vendors, you know, look at what packages are there and what their reliabilities are. So reliability is an SLA service level agreement and they'll, they'll publish that. Uh, and they'll say, Hey, we guarantee you'd have X amount of uptime. And if they don't, You'd call them on it. You should get a refund. We've got uh, major construction going on right here in Rogers and Pinnacle. And regularly uh, for the last part of last year, we had regular outage with the service provider in the area. So our clients were suffering. And I'm like, you know, we, we, we advocate dual WAN for redundancy. So where we come from in the enterprise, downtime is not, I mean, you keep thousands of workers 24 seven around the globe running. So the mindset that we take and the approach that we take to things is, is, is very uptime centric, which means it's just got to run. I mean, that's what a lot of people expect. Small businesses, a lot of times close the doors on a Friday and then they come back on a Monday or, you know, it's an eight to five thing. You know, we're used to operating in a 24 by seven global environment. So, you know, we, we want to bring those solutions to bear and have them as options and try to present them at a cost that's affordable to a small business. And so an example of that would be, um, in the telecommunication space specifically, a lot of businesses and uh, we have a client in Cave Springs and they fired up a new business and they purchased a dedicated fiber internet link for the business. Well, dedicated fiber is expensive. And the reason she purchased it was because they were, she was told, hey, this is the most reliable thing that they sell. Well, that is, dedicated fiber is the most reliable thing. AT&T, Ritter, or any other service provider is gonna be able to sell you. It's the best they got. They got a lot of redundancy built in underground for it. 
Um, and they can stand on a higher SLA with that saying it's going to be available more so than a standard cable modem or the other thing. But it, it comes at a cost, at a very significant cost. And probably average, throwing a number, around 800 bucks or so a month. Um, and a lot of businesses just can't afford that $800 a month, but they need that, that type of resiliency. So a uh, solution th that we present for customers is uh, we can come in and get a commodity grade internet service from like a Cox and a commodity grade internet service from an AT&T. And we can bond those in a device uh, at your location. And if AT&T does not work at all nationally, globally, that does not matter because Cox will run your network for your business. And if Cox goes down for whatever reason, uh, AT&T will run your business. The uptime uh, of that solution uh, will beat what a dedicated fiber solution will allow. And it's going to be approximately half the cost in a lot of times, a lot of cases. Uh, for example, in our office, we pay about $400 for the internet and we pay an AT&T and Cox link and we bond them together. And when AT&T has problems in the area, we just continue to work. Um, the you know, kind of the epiphany for a solution like that came from an experience I had back in corporate and IBM came in and said, Hey, we're going to sell you this flagship server. It's never going to die. And it's awesome. And, you know, we go through everything pre-sales. We test the box, we pull the trigger, very expensive piece of enterprise equipment. And within 90 days of pancakes, and I've got my production stuff running on it. And I have, you know, uh, suits and ties flying in from IBM, talking to suits and ties locally about, hey, you did a good purchase. But at the end of the day, engineers don't know what they don't know. And what killed it was a nine volt battery, basically, that was non-redundant in the frame. It had tons of redundancy built into it, but there was a battery that was not packed up by a different battery. And when it failed, the whole box failed. And at that point, you know, we decided to take more of that under our control for redundancy. So we, we began purchasing with a little bit different strategy and, and handling and controlling more of that on our own. So in the network space, that's an example of kind of how we do that. And we're able to achieve that, you know, at a cost that a lot of businesses are able to, to absorb and afford, uh, you know, so, and on the phones, um, you know, we've, we've got, uh, you know, we've got a phone plan that, that we will sell voice over IP. Things are very mobile nowadays. So, it's got to be mobile friendly. And then I know that the ASBTDC has talked about, you know, go to Eddie, there's options for forwarding, depending on how small you are. You should be careful about giving your cell phone number out because then everything hits that number. And then, you know, when you grow to a point where you can't, you know, handle it all on that one line anymore, you got to port it and those kind of things. So just kind of think ahead for those kind of, those kind of solutions and situations. Jason, Sorry I know, uh, yeah, you're good. Um, I know that uh, telecommunications is one of the very first things that a lot of small businesses have to tackle. Um, and, you know, we've got a lot of people working from home now. And so there's a lot of those work at home, uh, work from home solution and questions. So I just wanted to, to pause here and make sure we are almost, we're coming up on the halfway point, if you can believe it. But um, I want to just pause here and make sure that uh, nobody has any specific questions. I see you all are um, sending Alan some questions, which is great. Um, and he's uh, putting, rolling out answers there left and right. So please continue to do that. But I just wanted to give everybody an opportunity if you are having um, a specific experience or anything that you wanted to share about um, the telecom aspect of things, please feel free to, to throw that out there. Yeah, and, you, and you're right. A lot of times it's the first contract you sign, and a lot of times it happens before people call us, just like this thing, you know. So she's in a five-year deal, you know, that she's got to wait to get out of before she's able to split like we have, you know. But when we implemented the equipment, we implemented with that design in mind for when we do switch over. But, but yeah, you almost can't call too soon, you know, when it comes to planning for this stuff with technology. So your branding and your domain, you know, you're going to choose your business name or, or maybe your rebranding or maybe you want to, you know, position yourselves a little differently, uh, you know, forward facing, uh, you know, on the web or whatever. So there's websites that you do, you, you grab your domain from a registrar, it's going to be hosted, maybe a service is going to take care of all this for you, you got to consider whether you're doing e commerce online, what kind of platform you're going to do, how mobile it is, like if you get with a vendor, something I, I always, you know, try to really address is vendor lock in. Uh, you know, vendors are, Hey, great. I've got this fantastic solution. And when you come sign up with me, you'll never leave me. It's hotel California uh, because it is custom coded and you will never be able to port that to anything else other than like a complete rip and replace. And all the investment that you put in that, that technical debt is completely lost. So you have to be aware of those things as you step into that. And, you know, on the productivity tool side, 
you know, we're an Office 365 shop here. We use Google Workspace. We're familiar with both. Um, you know, emailing, that's the way we communicate and have for many, many years now. Uh, you know, more of these meetings and things online are happening. You also have to consider your workflows, just what kind of tools are available for what your needs are. Uh, how do you track workflow now remotely, really? So are you running a Kanban board on Trello potentially to keep track of work tasks or who's doing what? You know, so those are things that you really want to consider. Uh, Asana, I think, is another platform out there that's pretty popular for stuff like that. But how do you keep folks busy when you're dispersed nowadays for the most part versus being in an office when you can come stand in a pod and, you know, talk to five people at a time and really kind of distribute workflow verbally that way, the way things used to be now, how are these things happening now? That's kind of pivoted some of the productivity tools that are chosen today for a lot of businesses. Jason, I know a lot of our, um, going back to branding and domain, I know a lot of our clients, that's another thing that they do fairly quickly. And, um, and you know, some of those monthly fees can really add up um, over time. You know, you think you're paying $6 here and $10 there and, and some of those things. So um, what are some of your, um, you know, productivity tools are great. Um, typically, a lot of times people come in and there's a free version of a lot of things. And then there are, you know, other you know, versions. Is there is there any tips or tricks on when to use the free, when to upgrade, and um, and some of those things, and how to kind of keep some of those prices from accumulating too quickly? Yeah. So um, you know, and we're actually on a slide here that'll kind of speak to some of that. But like um, what we what we do, like try try before you buy all you can is what I say because you don't never you don't really know until you lay hands on things. In my old purchasing role where I was at. Uh, we would literally have vendors fly in equipment, set it up, and, you know, and show us how it works on our floor in our environment before we pull the trigger on purchase. Um, you know, it's a little different ballgame in the small business space, but it's still there. You know, software as a service, like you say, you you sign up on a 30-day trial, you get to implement it. But make sure when you do your testing, you really focus on the testing and you test it right. And, and you're really vetting out all the features. Um, you know, there was, uh, you know, the story guy, right? There was a client locally purchased a piece of software that they thought fit the bill. It ended up not, and they spent 50 grand on a software package for their business that had two features missing that when they purchased it, they tested it, but they only tested it from an office perspective, the office worker perspective. And in the field where the field guys were at, there were two key features that were missing. And when they rolled the software out and the field guys were unable to be effective, they essentially had to roll it back. And they asked us to engage the software development team for the you know, for the product and try to get them to implement these things. And at the end of the day, you're kind of at the mercy of those guys doing that software install because they're the ones that own the code. Uh, nothing we could really do to wrap around that. So it was kind of a bad deal. Uh, they ended up, you know, kind of ejecting and, and pivoting, but, but yeah, you're right. I mean, and some of those costs can also just continue to add up. It looks cheap at the beginning. So really look at what you're getting for what you're paying for how much it covers or what you need. And then are there services that bundle those things? You know, and that's where, you know, like on this business OS slide, we're looking at like QuickBooks that, you know, a lot of businesses use QuickBooks uh, and you guys have got resources for that. Um, coming from enterprise where we did, you know, when we set out, we wanted something that was a little broader in, in its uh, design. So uh, we have a platform called Zoho that we use and it's the business operating system we chose and it has CRM built into it. It has uh, uh, sales, you know, some sales pieces built into it. It has inventory built into it. It has, you know, invoice and billing management built into it. It's it honestly like the the licensing for the Zoho thing we pay for has 43 applications inside of it for your business. And that's like bang for your buck, right? You're, you know, you may not use all of them. I think we use like a dozen right now, but as they continue to add modules to it, you know, the, they code and add to this ecosystem that continues to, you know, increase the value of the product. Um, if you get something, and not that QuickBooks is wrong, a lot of people use it. It's good for a lot of folks, uh, you know, every, you know, if every, you know, problem is a, a nail, all I'm going to carry is a hammer kind of a thing. Everybody has a different thing. So, so QuickBooks works for a lot of folks. But there are a lot of bolt-ons that happen with that, that you'll buy a package and then bolt it on and it's a separate uh, developer a separate back back end software company that's writing that now you're at the mercy of two separate software vendors for that function to work watch those things um, you know at least with zoho i can engage zoho and that is one team that manages this entire suite of products and the integration between them is is really pretty seamless and there's a lot of really cool things you can do with that um, you know like i say zoho does have a crm but also list you know hubspot salesforce so how do you manage your customer interactions track all those things um, 
we there's really some pretty neat things with like even voice over ip integration like we have a customer even our stuff too where if you call us uh it registers caller id and it looks you up in our database you know if you're an existing customer we can add a new record you know all those things happen so you can track those engagements because when a customer calls and talks to bob and then calls back and talk to mary well mary can see the last call that was done and the, the record there and then that customer just feels so much more taken care of because they're not you know telling their story over and over again every time they call for whatever service they may need or those kind of things so you know crm is a pretty cool tool and then think, every uh, jason i'm just going to ask real quick because i know that a lot of times uh, people get into these and then they've got all of their information uploaded and they've been using them for a while i think one of the intimidating factors is switching out of those and starting a new system um mm. you know we we so Salesforce and other um, CRM uh, client uh, management systems um, are, are definitely some of those intimidating factors. QuickBooks can be too. Switching everything over can be really intimidating. Um, do you have any um, any like uh, less, less painful ways to do those things um, other than getting into them and then figuring it out later? Yeah. So, uh, you know, back to the whole focus on the trial, make sure that you exercise the system before you commit. Anything is a commitment, right? You want to commit to it because you want to do it right. You just want to make sure that the path you've chosen is the correct path. Engage experts, right? And we're not an expert of everything. Uh, fairly resourceful, have a good network of people, can reach out to people uh, on, on others' behalf where it's like, hey, I don't even know who to call. Well, call us. We, you know, we, we hang a bunch of nerds too. We'll all talk together and figure something out. Uh, or reach out into networks. I have no problem calling somebody blind on the web and talking geek speak. It's what we do. And I can get got up to speed, translate that stuff to the business. They're like, okay, that does not work for me. We're going to move on to another product. That the pre-work is very critical. When you get moved into it, you know, making, you know, making the best judgment you can with for the right product is, is key. But then if you're in it, if it's a system that has a standard backend, then that's something that can be exported and imported fairly easily a lot of times. So when you're exiting a system, it's not as bad, right? Like you can export it. There's some common formats of files and things that we can look to kind of flatten into and then migrate data and then, you know, build a new system. This is Tyson was growth by acquisition. We did this all the time. Like we would take a company we would buy and we would extract data, move it around, shift it, shove it into new databases or do whatever that stuff happens. It's application type maintenance, database type maintenance. Uh, but it is, it goes back to the term technical debt. It is technical debt. You are, when you venture down a path with any type of technology, you're investing in that. Well, if you choose to divert path, you know, how much debt is involved in that? You know, there's a whole lot of pieces of that decision to make when you make that pivot or move. But, but yeah, I mean, you just have to kind of watch those things and, and honestly keep up with it. Like if it's working for you now, great. But don't get complacent. There are some customers or there are some vendors that they own the market, they get complacent. And after years, they're not keeping up with the new guys out there kicking out the really good stuff that you want to be a part of. So, you know, give feedback to your vendor and say, I need you. I mean, you know, an email address will get answered, a phone, you know, phone calls and those things. A lot of people are intimidated to even do that online. And I'm just not that way. I, I will engage, you know, them and say, hey, this needs to be fixed my wife was working on some graphic design tool on the web. It was cloud-based. Uh, she does this stuff for my church and or our church. She had a problem with something and it wasn't working right. And I'm like, email them, tell them this is what you want to happen. In two weeks, they fixed the problem yeah, because it was, she wasn't the only one emailing them. They, every software development company wants to, they want to sell. They want to have a product that people use. And if enough people give feedback, that's the user voice wins a lot of times and, and they'll, steer that product to what the user base wants or else they're going to be you know not selling as many products and kind of on the the down or down in, downward end of it so so yeah i mean i definitely say feedback's good make sure you're you know checking stuff up front and then where you're at along the way just continue to keep up and maintain with it and if it's a portable system even better you know those are those are the real good ones but anything can be done. I mean, you know, it's in, in technology, it really, you know, it, it can be very expensive, you know, uh, an expensive conversation, but uh, technology, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things you can do with it. So, and uh, the piece I kind of touched on earlier that a lot of people kind of gl gloss over is contract management, you know, have some way to track and manage your contracts for your business. 
um, have a reminder set to revisit it. You know, even if it's something pretty simple, that's like, Hey, you know, it's May, I need to, I need to just look at my contracts for the year or whatever, just do something on a regular basis, no matter how basic it may be, because you will end up, you know, something will expire. You have an opportunity to renegotiate a new vendor enters the market, you know, those kind of things. Uh, you have employees that go employees that come, maybe you have added so many employees that your software licensing, you now have a break for if you were to go back and renegotiate because you've added 10 employees and you hit that next tier, but the vendor is not going to volunteer that up. You know, you can go back and say, Hey, now I'm at 50 users for this. And if I'd have bought it brand new at 50, my price per user is 10 bucks, not 12 those kind of things. Those are conversations to have, you know, and then when you select your vendors, like Alan and I sit with uh, leadership for, for our customers and, and we'll sit down and help them vet, you know, this is the path they'll say, Hey, this is the path I want to take. Is this the right vendor to choose for this? And the only way we are able to do that is to really ingrain ourselves. And that's the whole partner piece. So like get in, understand the business, talk to the people, get, understand where they want to go and then look at what they're, you know, where their opportunities are, what vendors they're looking at, do the research, have the conversations, you know, with those vendors and, and, uh, you know, I, customer references are huge. I almost never bought anything at Tyson. Uh, and even today without, okay, you want to sell me something? And I tell people to do this with us, customer reference, anything you got a customer right now, you got two or three, let me talk to them and see what their experience is. I don't want to hear the salesman telling me this the salesman tells you it's the greatest thing ever all the time. I want a real customer that you have. So, you know, call, call other customers without the salesperson on the line and say, Hey, you've been using this for two years. What's it like? Really? Like, what's it really like? And, and get that feedback and somebody who's like industry as you maybe in a different area in the country, even better. Right. Cause it's going to be more specific to what you do. You can ask those questions, how it suits your needs better. So if you were to uh, work with some of, you know, a lot of our companies are uh, smaller. And so if you were to maybe keeping a spreadsheet, would that be something you'd recommend of kind of all the vendors that you've got going on? Cause you were exactly right. After a period of time, you add, you add the need, you have that have a need and you add the service and you add the contractor, the contractor, and just kind of a simple spreadsheet of the contractor kind of when, when you engage, what you're paying on a regular basis. And then you're, I love your idea of going back and just be like, okay, it's May. I'm going to reevaluate all of this and what is it really costing me and am I getting everything because just like everything else that contractor you know they're going to let you go for as long as you will go sometimes they increase price and you don't even know um, we all have an inbox full of emails from all of these people that were just like ah and they email us so so many times sometimes that we don't know when it's important and when it's just a hey we've got something else to sell you <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, it's, you know, and it's also maybe you have had a significant outage with a certain vendor and it's something that you have a leverage point now uh, and you can come back and negotiate when you do your renewal. Hey, you know, you guys said it was going to be this. We took a big hit. My, you know, my business was down for a full day or two and you said that wouldn't happen. So when we renegotiate, factor that in, you know, kind of twist them a little bit, see if you can get a discount on those things. Uh, th those are just all negotiating points, but a spreadsheet's a great idea get your vendors, drop them in there, contact information. I mean, people a lot of times have to dig through paperwork and stuff for that. Keep it all tidy, nice and neat, really good because you can pick up the phone and call and, you know, and also those relationships too, because those salespeople will rotate those. That's a good place to keep that, right? So you got a new salesperson, drop it in the spreadsheet, you know, keep that contact information updated, who you're talking to. It all comes down to relationships. You know, if you got a great relationship with your salespeople, with your vendors and stuff, it, it will also, you know, grease the wheels whenever things need to happen sometimes in a pinch and, and that helps too. So, so security. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. Um, so like I say, you know, and everybody's, you know, everybody understands that security is important and there's been all kinds of things, you know, it comes out in the news a lot, uh, you know, a lot, and I don't like to try to say, Hey, you know, I don't like to do anything fear-based. So please don't think I'm trying to strike fear into everybody here, but security is super, super important, uh, for your business. Uh, you know, whether you're under any type of regulatory compliance, you know, like I've got listed here, if you've got PII, which is personal identifiable information, you know, credit card information, uh, HIPAA, you know, like healthcare stuff, you have anything specific to your industry that would be like, you know, we've got DOD stuff that's super special. That's got all these other, you know, FIPS compliance and federal regs and things like that. You know, those are all things in your business. You need to know what you're supposed to be compliant to. 
and you got to know the target before you start striving towards that and then implementing the technology layers to get there. At the end of the day, one of the best things you can do with security is education. Just educate yourselves a, a little bit on, you know, what not to click because I'm sure a lot of folks on this call that have dealt in any capacity with technology, people like me, and I come in and say, hey, we need to install this thing or set this guardrail up or do that. And they're like, yeah, well, now I can't do my job. Well, there's a balance of that, right? As a technology, uh, you know, as a guy who influenced technology, I can say that we've got to put some guardrails up and sometimes they got to be pretty high for certain reasons. But at the end of the day, we also understand and respect you got to do your job too. So there's a balance in that. But there's no 100% you know, guaranteed bulletproof system that's going to prevent all the bad things from happening to, to any one person or machine or whatever. There's what they call zero days. Uh, and a zero day is like somebody who develops an exploit today and nobody knows it exists in the wild until it gets released. Uh, a lot of antivirus definitions and all the things that happen that are the checkers for these bad things are built on a, a definition database. It has to know about the fingerprint of what's bad to identify it to start with. Zero days, that's completely useless for. So there's what they now call heuristics with data analytics, uh, AI, and machine learning, and they will learn the behavior of your system, what you normally do on it day to day. It will actually understand what is an anomaly to that behavior and start red flagging those. So there's pretty advanced stuff for security. It gets kind of into the, it's a sim, uh, security information uh, event management tools. So it like tracks events on machines in real time. And there's, it gets really deep on, on the FedGov side, especially, but those are things that you know, however far you want to carry that, you almost can carry it. But education is really one of the best and cheapest tools for that. Um, we have a platform actually that we uh, send like phishing is huge. Email is the number one vector period of people clicking something in an inbox. A lot of times it looks like a, hey, you need to sign in to download this invoice. And then you give your credentials away and then somebody goes and signs in and then, you know, everything breaks loose. So multi-factor authentication, do it every time you can. I mean, everywhere you can multi-factor authentication uh, and even if you do multi-factor with a phone number that's okay but there are there actually are ways to break that and work around that so like uh, you know whether you do a push notification with an app or something like Microsoft Authenticator those kind of things uh, but, a, but a typical phone number with all the phone spoofing stuff I'm sure people get these calls from there's a lot of things in that system that uh, folks are actually able to kind of circumvent some of that and and split MFA to a different device sometimes and even break and even breach through MFA uh, security. So there's, there's a whole lot in this topic uh, that really boils down to, you know, an awareness of things, uh, you know, making sure that your environment is, is properly secured. And if you don't know, ask somebody to come in and take a look and give you kind of a general, like a risk assessment, you know, to, to come in and take a look at things and give you a, a health a grade on where things are at. Um, and then, uh, you know, on the software side too, you know, making sure your tools are updated and maintained and they're not outdated. Firmware, we had a customer, the one that did the ransomware thing. I mean, they had an updated firmware and it wasn't even how they got their ransomware. It was a different vector that they got ransomware from. But I told them, hey, this is just another thing. Your firmware is not updated. I can exploit your router from my office and backdoor into your network. And I will prove that if you will let me. And they said, sure, go ahead and do it. And I busted in the back door of their network from my office, which could have been anywhere in the world, um, just to show them, hey, you know, this, this firmware bug was out there. It was a known exploit. I literally went out, downloaded the exploit, executed it off my laptop, and was in the back door of their network in five minutes. So, you know, making sure maintenance is big with those kind of th things. It's really a security deal. Jason, um, so if we're, um, and not everybody's chimed in on, um, you know, what, what industry they're in or what their business is, but, you know, so if you had a one to 20 person business, let's just say, and generally speaking, um, and, and maybe it's just a one to 10 or one to 15, um, what are some of the, do you have um, some favorites? I know that, you know, malware bites or something like that is a, is a pretty common one. A lot of people are very mobile. Um, so you've got a, a suite of everything from a laptop to a phone to a desktop um, and and what are some of the things that need to go across those and then um, what are some of the regular kind of health checks exactly what you're talking about that somebody can do to make sure um, and then the other question that um, and we get a lot of is just kind of you know password protection and some of those other um, things I don't know if you come across anything for really for smaller companies that you have their favorites and we're not 
we know that you're not getting paid by them, but, <laughs> um, but you know, a last pass or anything like that, that you feel like, you know, people that you see commonly skip that could have um, saved some headaches for, for small businesses. Yeah. Password management's big. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you know, and we're, we're a LastPass Enterprise uh, customer, so we use LastPass Enterprise. And I know LastPass got some bad press lately about tracking things and all that. But for us, I want them to track that for my technicians because I know every time one of my technicians uses a password and what password they used. And if there's a termination thing, I can go back and see what accounts they've accessed and change passwords and things like that. But password sharing is something that, I mean, I visited a place that had three ring binder with sticky notes. That was their password management. I'm like, eh, you know, like, and then they weren't updated and then the sticky notes inevitably fall off and they don't have account information anymore. So having a system for that's really important. And whether it's a last pass, keep pass, there's a bunch of them, one pass, whatever works for you is really, you know, whatever you're going to adopt. Because if I can throw technology out there and say, hey, this is great, it works great for me. And you look at it and say, I'm not going to use it. Well, it's of zero use. You know, you're not going to implement it. You're not going to follow it. You know, and if you're not, you know, following plan, then it's inevitably going to fall off and something's going to happen. Uh, from a hardware perspective, you know, like you were asking about, you know, laptops and all those things for your network, I would not advise for any business to go to Walmart or Best Buy and buy something off the shelf. Those devices are, there's millions of them out there. And if I'm a bad guy and I'm writing exploits for things, that's what I'm going to hit because they're everywhere and I can hit millions of them. And at the end of the day, there's those devices don't have an army of security engineers that are working every day, 24 seven to keep the bad guys out. And that's what business devices do the business devices um, are what, you know, typically are called UTMs, unified threat management or uh, next gen firewall type things. And they unfortunately have a subscription with them, but that subscription pays for those security engineers to keep you safe. And there are constant software patches updated on the network, on the wire that keep things safe on the wire for you. Uh, that is not a thing when you go buy a Linksys down at Best Buy. You set it out there, you forget about the firmware. Next thing you know, there's an exploit that comes and you know somebody's knocking on the back door and kicking it in from overseas and they get into your network. So you know, the, the typically the stories you hear online of that kind of stuff where somebody got into somebody's webcam at home and all these, a lot of times it's they left a default password on something or, you know, they've bought some consumer off the shelf, something that was never updated or managed. Because even those consumer companies, when an exploit's found, you know, they're, they're obliged to fix it. They've got to push firmware update and those things. But if you don't know it's there, who's tracking that, you know? So you got to keep up with those things. Uh, we, you know, uh, antivirus and management, you know, you mentioned malware bytes. It's a tool we've used in the past. Um, Bitdefender is pretty common. Uh, that's one that we, we advocate. It's the core of the tool that we use for our security suite on the AV side of the house uh, for our managed AV services. And it'll run on almost any device you got. Uh, mobile device management, a lot of companies, you know, that's that whole thing as a small business and even an enterprise, like, you know, your phone versus company issued phone versus who owns it and what apps are installed and all those things that you run down. And it's a case by case basis. But at the end of the day, you can, you can load MDM tools, which is mobile device, man, mobile device management tools on, on devices that are, you know, iPads or Androids or whatever, and you can, you know, track them and, you know, check them for things. The, the whole process of like, how do you know when is it's gotta be my, my thing is it's got to be automated, you know, hundred percent. I mean, it needs to be where something is automatically kicking that stuff in and tracking patches and alerting when it's not getting done. Right. If something happens, because at the end of the day, human behavior is I'm putting out the hottest fire anytime I come to work and something has to be, that's what technology does is behind the curtains. It should always be working for you when you're doing your thing. And so to, to put on the checklist of all your employees, Hey, you need to run antivirus today at noon. And Hey, I need you to go on your phone and check this app and run this process. And then that, it's just not, I mean, it may work for a week, but that, you know, it real automation is, is really key to that. So I would say that's a big part of the success of an implementation for that. And then business class hardware, really it's more expensive, but at the end of the day, what is the cost of your business? If you get breached, you have, I mean, cyber sec insurance, you know, real quick tip for that. Everybody should have that, but, but uh, yeah, if, what, what's the cost of your business? If your data gets breached, if you get ransomware, you get shut down from something, you know, firmware is not updated and then something craters, there's a cost to that. And it's hard to quantify because that's a risk maybe into the future that you don't see right now, but you know, it's, it's definitely something worth sitting down, analyzing and saying, I'm going to accept that risk or yeah, probably best I'd go this other route, you know, and, and yeah. go ahead and invest. I know we've only got about 10 minutes left and you got a couple other things and, and, and what to purchase is, is definitely one of those. Um, and, uh, and you've got a couple of other things to cover. So I don't want to 
don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we'll keep going. Um, so yeah, the devices thing real quick, kind of we just covered it is, you know, laptop, desktop, lease versus buy and refurb versus new. I'm, you know, I will shop refurb and it doesn't, doesn't bother me a bit. A lot of our businesses, we're going to do what's best for them based on budget. And I understand everybody's on a budget. Uh, so we'll, we'll go out and search whatever channel we think is going to be best for the customer and, and bring that to them. COVID kind of put a wrench in refurb because so many people went remote laptop refurb market dried up. So that was, that's been a really tough one lately, but you know, is it cap versus operational expenses? You know, you need a desktop laptops nowadays for the mobile workforce is huge. So laptops are, they're hard to get. I mean, timelines on orders and things, it's kind of tough. And then cloud, cloud for mobility, you know, a lot of people use cloud for a lot of different things, file sharing, uh, you know, you got Dropbox and different services like that. You've got, you know, Azure, which is the back end of, of Microsoft's cloud, you know, AWS, we've done some projects in there. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, we really stress business class, business quality devices when you do these things, because, you know, warranties that, you know, like if you buy a Dell or an HP with a warranty for next business day, you know, that if something happens, you're up the next day, those guys are going to be there. They're going to ship you a new device. You know, we put all that stuff. And then with our healthcare clients, we have a keep your own hard drive clause so that if we do need to ship it off for data protection, we'll pull the hard drive out. It's covered in that. So there's all these considerations and it's all pertaining to, you know, what is your business need, but make sure when you select your devices that, you know, it's and, and standards for things also help like buy the same type of device for your employees. So when you maintain them, if something breaks, you can rob a part from here and move it over to here, or you know what you're dealing with when you have a problem across them, uh, you know, those kind of things. And you know, life cycle wise track when you're buying them and plan on a three to five year refresh on that budget for it. So if you've got a dozen laptops in your fleet, you know, every, every year recycle three of them. Right. And then in four years, you've re recycled everybody and you keep them on a trickle and it's not a pain to the, that much of a pain to the budget of buying 12 laptops, all brand new. Um, so yeah, that's just some tips on, on hardware pieces. And, you know, we've absorbed all kinds of brands of hardware. I mean, I've seen a ton of what's out there and there's, you know, some stuff I haven't touched, but being growth by acquisition, the way we were corporate and then seeing what we see now in small business that prepared us even better just to step in, rip a curtain back and just see something strange and start digging in uh, and, and uh, you know, absorb it, support it and a life cycle it when it makes sense. You know, uh, data protection, super critical for your business. Uh, you know, you, you know, want to make sure you got good backups, make sure you take them off site, make sure it's automated if you can get it that way. Documentation is key encryption uh you know make sure you've got your data encrypted especially if it's super sensitive stuff because somebody smash and grab a laptop yank a hard drive out i don't have to have your password if it's not encrypted i'll put that hard drive on another machine steal all your data uh, if it's encrypted i won't be able to do that so those are things to think of you know there's st scary statistics out there on if you truly have a disaster and your business goes down and you have a complete data loss event the odds of your business surviving is like you know single digit percentages it's bad um, and you know, what, what's the impact of, you know, there's two key things in the, in the data loss area that it's, it's RP, what we call RPO and RTO. So recovery point objective and recovery time objective point is how much data can I lose time is how long does it take me to get it back is in backups is not necessarily, Hey, I got my data. It's there on a shelf. Great. Your data's on a shelf. How fast can you be operational off that data on the shelf? If it takes you five days, you have five days of essentially not running your business. So all things to consider, you know, when you're talking about protecting the data for your business, something that I did a ton of in my old world. And I have a, I could talk forever about that for sure. Um, but moving on for time. So we'll, we'll hit the remote workforce slide. And I think this will be the last one we'll open for questions, but, but uh, in the world we're in today, everybody knows, you know, the, the workforce has been dispersed. Things have changed. Uh, I talked earlier about data security, you know, and phishing scams and things. The buddy system is something that happens inherently in an office that's not happening today. Phishing uh, increased, I think, close to 800% uh, over last year in 2020. And that threat vector was the number one thing, and it has been for a long time, but it had a huge spike because typically those emails go out in batch. So multiple people get them at the same time in the same organization. And a lot of times it kind of looks a little odd and you pause for a second and you'll look at your buddy over the pod and say, Hey, does this look right? And they say, and now let's delete that. That don't happen today. You don't have that like quick check, you know? So a lot of people are falling victim to that and, and they click it and fall, you know, fall for the bait. And then next thing you know, they've released W2s or W4s for the company 
and you can't get that data back. So I think that I saw in the chat earlier, stealing a line from me, but you can't, you can't unreach your data. That's for real. You know, it's out in the ether and it ain't come back. So, you know, just watch for sharing devices at home, you know, with kids playing games and things, that stuff, you know, don't, don't mix those things. Uh, don't cross those streams. Uh, your network at home, you know, make sure it's secure, make sure it's password protected. Look for that little lock. We saw an SSL icon earlier, like, if you have an SSL icon, the traffic you've got flowing between you and that site is going to be encrypted. Um, doesn't necessarily mean east west is secure, but what's north south between you and that site is secure. Uh, you know, and education. You know, we, we advocate a lot of education. That's what we we love doing this right here. I hope to get to do a lot more of this because this is really cool to to share kind of what we know. But but teaching people what to watch for, you know, how to navigate those things. And in, in a given email, when you get it, you know, a lot of people spoof display name to be the boss man. And a phishing scam is going to tell you, I need you to take an action. Most likely it's urgent and it's probably on a Friday afternoon. That's how they get people because you're trying to rush out of the office and you got to do something quick and oh, boss man needs W4s and you send them out the door. Well, the display name may look like boss man, but if you click the drop down, the email address listed a lot of times is some foreign email account. And I mean, anybody can spoof that display name. It's very easy. It's not even like, you know, hacky, ha hacker worthy, like, you know, technical skill. It's just like a very simple kind of thing to do. And, and a lot of times that, you know, casting a net of 10,000 emails like that, they may get five clickers and, uh, you know, they've got 50 W4s and they're off to the black market to sell it. Um, so just be aware of those things, you know, con keep in communication. If in doubt, pick up the phone and call. You know, if that's a legitimate invoice from one of your vendors, call them. Say, hey, is this real? Or have you been breached? And now these people are trying to get to me because that's happened. Uh, so, you know, it, they work every angle they can. And, you know, sitting at one computer, you can reach literally globally to millions and billions of devices. So, you know, we're, we're all, you know, out there navigating this ecosystem, you know, of this technology and trying to stay as protected as we can and take care of our assets as a business and serve our customers the best way we can. So, but yeah, I mean, there's a ton of tools. The good thing about technology, I call it the great equalizer. It's available to almost anybody out there. And at a consumptive cost, a lot of times you swap a card and you can get a little piece of that with all this cool technology for a small price monthly with some of these services that, you know, and that's the thing too, you know, back to the cost. A lot of people, when they look at that cost, like, yeah, but if you knew what was going into to those services too, you would understand the value sometimes. And that's some things we help explain to customers too. It's like, that does seem like that. It may seem a little bit expensive, but look at all you get for it. And if you implement it right, you get the value out of it. You know, I think a lot of people are okay with that. So. Well, let's take this time, you guys. If anybody has a question and you want to unmute and ask um, yourself, that would be great. We've got a couple minutes left, or um, you can also type in the chat. But we'd love to hear any questions or comments that anybody has. Jason, I learned a lot. That, that was, you and Alan are a wealth of information. And Alan, I know you've been on the back end uh, chatting away. Um, is there anything that came up uh, really commonly that uh, that you feel like everybody should know? Um, no, I mean, a lot of the, the, the chats were public to everyone there, but just a couple of direct ones, just, uh, you know, any system will work, you know, as long as you work in the system. I mean, that's, uh, you know, talking about following up on your contracts and stuff like that. And just, um, and just, you know, that, that unbreaching your data, that's, that's, that's so the whole security thing is critical and key. Um, just, uh, you know, and people just need to ask questions and then they need to, you know, Need to be to reach out to the local businesses and then find out how else you know just, i'd like to like to definitely promote the local businesses and stuff like that and there's a lot of services that are available out there um we talked about some of the social media stuff and some of the chats so but now i don't have an overarching uh, theme that came through yeah we do i mean we'll sit down and talk you know for free and we'd love to come out and visit i love to learn about local businesses and what they're doing there's some really neat stuff going on in Northwest Arkansas. I got, you know, when I walk into some businesses, I'm shocked at what they're doing. It's really cool stuff, you know, and we get to learn about what they do, you know, and kind of navigate some of the technical pieces for them and help them position themselves, you know, maybe for a little bit more success or a little bit more growth, you know, for certain things. So I love to talk tech. As you can see, I didn't give any time for Q and A. So <laughs> I love to meet <laughs> well, with anybody. <laughs> we have loved getting to know you and we're very excited that you are a local and uh, I hope everybody caught your um, contact information and we want to thank everybody for being here. Um, 
as an attendee of this conversation, you will be emailed a copy of this presentation. Um, Jason and Alan have been very gracious in letting us uh, get that to you. So if there was anything that you missed, you will have that there. Um, and the recording will be on our website, um, as well as you will get a brief survey that will help us continue to bring you quality programs. Guess, uh, Chris, you want to close us out? We can get stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, I know. Well, you guys can also find a full listing of our workshops at sbtdc.uark.edu. I kept post posting that in the chat for you guys too, but you can also use the QR code that's right there on your screen um, for more information and to sign up for notifications and even become a client. Um, we are also posting a lot of information on social media, so please follow us at Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. But again, thank you guys so much for spending your lunch with us today, and we hope to see you guys next time. Thank you all so much. Bye, everybody.